have been pushing the boundaries of modern workplace for a really long time. When you think about Office 365, that's allowed customers to change the way they carry out business processes, the way they work, and they've been more productive than ever before. Previously, the barrier to that was always, how long does it take us to deploy new technology? And then with our intelligent cloud platform, Azure, it started off as data storage, um, compute capability, but since then it's grown massively to IoT, to artificial intelligence, quantum computing, and the list is endless. We've got people who are no longer Azure experts, they are experts in each work stream that the platform allows. I guess the difficulty there has always been, it's a huge amount of capability that's always been confined to a screen, a keyboard, a mouse, and for people working in the field using their hands every day, it can be a challenge. And what mixed reality and connected devices are now allowing is for people to break free from the desk and access all of that capability and harness that capability in a way that's not been possible before. When you think about the use cases for that, it's endless. It's someone being able to walk around a factory floor, see real-time data, access that data, make changes to that data and carry out tasks as a result of what they're learning there. And that sounds simple, but when you think about someone having to balance a laptop around or someone carrying a tablet into an elevator shaft as an example, um, it can be quite a challenge. But being able to use your hands, have all of that content capability and data wherever you go and blend that with your physical world is really powerful. So field engineering is critical to all of our customers' businesses. Um, for a manufacturer, this could be the difference between being productive and actually not producing anything. And so when a field engineer is arriving on site, a lot of the time they can fix what they need to fix and they've got the information that they need. But every now and then there is service history that will help them be more efficient. There is the ability to access parts of data in a certain system. And a great example is someone in a plant room or an elevator shaft. Previously, they would either have to leave that location, go back to a desk, go back to a certain device, see what they need to see and then start carrying out the work. Now, for the first time, you know, we can carry on with the work that they need to do, access service history, access real-time information and start being far more effective and efficient. Um, and then equally, you know, every now and then, field engineers can't complete the task they're there to achieve. Whether that means it's something they've not seen before, it's a problem that's hard to resolve and they've not had to do that before, um, they can now get the eyes of an expert to see exactly what they're seeing and get instructed through that process of resolving that issue. Now this could mean the difference between attending site seven times as opposed to doing everything on the first visit. And um, that's reducing cost, reducing time scales, and it means people can continue being productive very quickly. So in the factory of the future, first line workers for the first time will be able to carry on doing the job that they're doing without having to leave that assembly line or that machine they need to use to complete their task. When you think about what they're doing every day, it's using their hands and access to data is something they would do in another location. Um, but for the first time, they can carry on doing what they need to do, it can be completely mobile, completely hands-free, but get real-time information on the machine they're using, real-time critical data that allows them to resolve issues before they occur. In the example of IoT, you can see when something is about to fail, you can see when there is a problem brewing, and you can almost address it before it even becomes an issue. Um, when you think about the sort of size of these factories, someone being able to identify where they should be at a certain point, someone being able to get to an issue quickly and being directed there, it previously would require some trial and error, walking around until you get to where you need to be. And we've got examples of our customers now can actually be directed to exactly where they need to get to, the panel they need to open, and exactly what needs to be resolved for things to continue. So that could be really powerful. So Microsoft has been focused on creating capability and technology at a rapid pace, and we've allowed our customers to do more and more. All of that has always been confined traditionally to a keyboard, a mouse and a screen. Um, and that's been really powerful, really useful for an information worker. But that's not what most of our customers do. They do many tasks wherever they are in very, very different ways depending on the industry they're in. And what mixed reality is going to allow is for people to access all of that capability in their physical space. And you're no longer confined to a screen, you're no longer, no longer confined to a desk and you can actually start doing things wherever you are, blending digital content, data, context in physical space, and that's gonna be really powerful. When you think about a designer being able to work truly in 3D and collaborate with their customers when they're designing something, that will completely shift the way that they've been working, that iterative approach. And for any customer, what's really important to consider is what are your critical business processes and where do you need to reduce cost and where do you need to reduce time scales? As soon as you identify that, 
it's very easy to think about how mixed reality can affect that. So from a design perspective, it could be taking a 12-week design process down to a few. From an efficiency perspective, if you can gain 25% efficiency on any task that a complex first-line worker is having to achieve each day, there is instant return there. And in the field engineering example that we talked about, think about the fact that you can go from seven visits down to one to the same site because you can resolve things faster and get access to experts when you can't resolve something very quickly. You'll really quickly start to see the sorts of areas that you will get return on. But really think about what do you need to reduce costs for and where do you need to reduce time scales. The moment you get there, you'll see a whole list of possible areas that return exists in.